Welcome to Epic Americana. My name is Jeff Hicks, the host for the show. We will journey through epic moments from the past and explore the historical events and stories that have shaped the United States and its communities. Thanks for listening as we uncover the epic events that have defined the American experience. Let's dive into history. I suppose the first time I crossed paths with Richard Zimmerman, or Dugout Dick as he was known, was when I was seven or eight years old. I grew up in Salmon, Idaho, and I knew most of the people my folks associated with, and some they didn't. Dad was always polite and treated everyone with respect and kindness, regardless of where they lived, how they dressed, or the career they chose. And he taught his kids to do likewise. The only reason Dugout Dick was different than some I knew in Salmon was because he was known to me and others as the cave guy. The fact that he chose to live in some old handmade caves was intriguing to me, and perhaps a bit odd. I knew how cold winters got in Salmon. My dad and I were talking about him one time, and Dad recalled a conversation he had with Dugout a couple of years before. The story went something like this. Dick was serving in the U.S. military. His group was out on patrol, and he ran out of water. So he peed in his canteen and drank that until he could find some fresh water. As a kid, I wondered what kind of maniac would drink pee. There had to be other options. But then I heard some survivalists talking about this very subject, and they claimed urine could be used as a liquid survival ration for a short time, if there was no water to be had. The point is, that's the story that, to me, defined Dugout Dick for the rest of the time I knew him. But like I was taught, I took an interest in Dugout, greeted him on the street, listened to his stories, and called him Sir when it was appropriate. Richard Zimmerman arrived in Salmon, Idaho, in around 1948. That's the time he decided to become a hermit. In today's terms, they're known as solitaries. With his own hands, a pick and a shovel, and a wheelbarrow, he dug into a rock slide on some land near the banks of the Salmon River, about 20 miles south of town. It was BLM property, and I guess he figured nobody wanted it. Who views a rock slide as prime real estate? Probably not even the BLM. But his hard work and ingenuity paid off. Before long, he had a few rooms carved into the hillside, custom fit with odds and ends, rustic framing along with some old windows and doors he probably found in a junk pile somewhere. Like the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I suppose that's what defined Dick's way of life and his decision to make do with whatever he could find. I overheard a few conversations around town that often went something like this. Those trashy-looking shanties across the river there at Elk Bend sure are an eyesore. Well, you know, those are dug out Dick's caves, and he lives there. That's his home. And he's all right not hurting anyone, leave him alone. And that's usually where the talk would end. The fact is, Doug was a nice, or Dick was a nice guy and harmless. And maybe to some people, he represented a life of freedom, living the American dream on his own terms. He certainly didn't bother anyone, and nobody bothered him, as far as I knew. Salmon was a place you could live on your own terms, a place where if you didn't bother anyone, people left you alone and didn't ask a lot of questions. According to family lore, my ancestors lived in caves when they migrated to Idaho from Kansas in the 1800s. It was their only option at the time. They were some of the first settlers on the scene in the Big Camas Prairie. According to their journals, cave dwelling isn't so bad if that's all you've got. Mike Hicks, my dad, 
drove a school bus up the river in the 1970s. Every couple of weeks, Dick would hitch a ride into town on the morning bus and be at the bus stop in the afternoon to catch a ride back home. I remember Dick climbing aboard the bus. I suppose, in retrospect, he looked just like a caveman, aside from his blue jeans, the flannel shirt, and the hard hat he always wore. The beard and bushy hair, along with his calloused hands, were the giveaway. But he was polite, and the kids showed him respect. Some even conversed with him, asking how he was doing and what he planned to do in town that day. Oh, going to get me a few groceries, maybe go see a friend, he would say in this fast, clipped style of speech. I think he really liked the company, and perhaps he looked forward to those journeys into town once in a while. Before showing up in Salmon, Dick was a 20th century drifter. He spent some time in the military, he hunted and fished, and he worked as a farmhand on a few ranches. He did some general roustabout work, and then he showed up in Salmon at the age of 32. It wasn't long before he traveled up the river to a rock slide nobody wanted and claimed it for his own. Like I mentioned, most of the times I saw Dick, he was wearing a hard hat, the kind you might see workers wear at a construction site. You bump your head a lot when you live in a cave, Dick said one time. In his heyday, Dick had 14 caves he rented for $2 a night, or $25 a month. I didn't know anyone who stayed in his caves. I think a few family members of mine did, but I didn't hear a lot about it. But I heard there were some out-of-staters who were traveling through who, who lived in those caves. And I suppose if you wanted to have a memorable time in the wilds of Idaho, and a good story to tell your friends back home, A night in one of Dick's caves would be the best place to do it. And to have Dick serenade you with his guitar and old hobo songs would be a great memory. Recently, I took a little trip to Salmon to see what's left of Dick's place. The BLM left one of his main caves, the one he lived in, and removed the rest, filled them in. Other than that, a few walls and trails are all that's left of Dick's 60 years of livelihood and handiwork. 30 years, or yards, 30 yards from Dick's cave dwelling is a vehicle turnout and some signs reminding the curious public who dug out Dick was and what he was all about. To the young, perhaps, he is a legend. To the rest of us, he's just a kind old guy who called a cave his home. Personally, I didn't really consider Dugout any more of a celebrity than some of the other old-timers I knew around town, like old Ollie the Swede, for example, and some others. Salmon was a unique place where some unique people lived, and because of that, Dugout Dick just, just seemed to fit in and lived the life on his own terms. The American dream means different things to different folks. Some may seek riches or fame. Some just want to live in a cave along the river and be left alone. Thanks for listening to Epic Americana, a product of Voice Right Media. Music